The Lambayaque civilization, also known as Sikon, thrived on the northern coast of Peru from around 750 to 1375 CE, positioned between the Middle Horizon and late intermediate period of the Central Andes. The Lambayaque people were renowned creators of art objects, intricate masks, and stunning goldwork. Their artistic contributions have significantly influenced the evolution of Andean art, leaving behind some of the most iconic imagery from ancient Americas. According to tradition, the Lambayaque dynasty was founded by Namlap, who arrived from the south with a group of warriors on balsa boats or rafts. They established themselves in various valleys of the region, a legend that later influenced the Chimu civilization. The initial city was Chot, now identified as Waka Kotuna. The dynasty reportedly ruled for 12 generations, with the last ruler being Fempelek. However, in reality, the Lambayaque culture likely emerged in the 8th century CE as it emerged from the shadows of the previously dominant Wari civilization. Instead of a centralized empire, Lambayaque rulers oversaw a network of interconnected cities linked by familial ties. Batan Grand, situated in the La Leche Valley, was a crucial Lambayaque site. The region had an irrigation system of canals and 17 large burial mounds, the largest being Waka Quarter, spanning 250 square meters. Within these pyramid mounds, tombs containing mummy bundles, sacrificial victims, and precious items made from copper alloys, silver, and gold were discovered. There were hundreds of gold cups or beakers with relief figures of rulers. Around 1100 CE, Batan Grand was abandoned, possibly due to an El Niño climate event, with floods followed by extended droughts. Although the structures show signs of intentional fire damage, the Lambayaque moved to Tukyum, which became their new religious capital. Tukyum expanded to cover 370 hectares, making it the largest ceremonial center in the ancient Andes. Ferro Huaringa was a vital hub for Lambayaque metal production, housing smelting furnaces and workshops. Particularly noteworthy were copper eye shaped ingots, naipes, which functioned as a form of currency during the Lambayaque culture's peak between 900 and 1100 CE. This is a rare instance in ancient Americas. Lambayaque rulers did not actively pursue regional conquests. Instead, they were eventually absorbed into the Chamu Empire around 1375 CE. Artists from Lambayaque were forcibly relocated to Chan Chan, the Chamu capital. This intercultural exchange continued the lineage of Andean art, passing on symbols like rulers with crescent-shaped headdresses, distinctive pottery forms, and advanced metalworking techniques. The Lambayaque civilization's astonishing wealth echoes through their remarkable art and architectural achievements. The Lambayaque civilization's opulence is vividly showcased through their remarkable art and architecture. Their palaces, sprawling over vast territories, were impressive displays of wealth. Gold took center stage in their artistic creations, adorning everything from body ornaments to masks. The elite members of society flaunted their riches unabashedly, wearing tunics embellished with panels of gold. An extant tunic boasts an astonishing 2,000 square gold additions, accompanied by oversized ear spools in gold and turquoise, splendid feather headdresses, and even golden gloves. The term conspicuous consumption could easily be coined to describe the Lambayaque elite's lifestyle. Lambayaque pottery is characterized by their sculpted and polished blackware, achieved through the use of molds for mass production. Relief decoration on pottery could be intricate, featuring human faces near the spout and animal figures. Inspired by the Mosh tradition, their favored vessel was the double-spouted variety, often adorned with a finely carved bridge and a distinctive flared foot. Notably, silver examples of these vessels have also been uncovered. Metalwork was an area of particular expertise for the Lambayaque people, especially in gold. The intricate process involved engraving, molding, cutting, soldering, and inlaying of the alloy material. Some of the most renowned art pieces from the Andes hail from Lambayaque, such as the gold ceremonial knives, Tumi, featuring handles representing Sakon lords. Inlaid with turquoise, these handles portray impressive headdresses, multiple earrings, small wings at the shoulders, 
a beak-like nose, and the characteristic Lambayake tear-shaped eyes. The form may symbolize Nainlap, the legendary first ruler who was said to have grown wings and flown into the sunset. Tumi knives served ceremonial purposes, including human sacrifices that involved decapitation, while functional versions had sharp bronze blades. A standout piece of Lambayake art is the splendid gold mask and headdress ensemble from Tomb 1 of the Waka Loro Burial Mound in Batan Grand. The red painted mask features ear spools and a three dimensional gold bat's head at the forehead. The towering headdress is adorned with gold feathers and 15 suspended gold discs. This mask belonged to a seated male, aged between 40 and 50, laid to rest in a 9 square meter tomb beneath an 11 meter shaft. The ruler embarked on the afterlife accompanied by an array of treasures, costumes, ceramics, and functional items. Lambayake litters found in tombs are noteworthy. These wooden structures, adorned with gold accents, often contain figurines of rulers and were originally adorned with feathers. Lambayake textiles, however, display a slightly unconventional style compared to other Andean weavers. Their borders are roughly cut, and back threads are left loose possibly indicating a focus on quantity over meticulousness. Designs frequently include animals, fish, and the iconic standing ruler figure seen in other art forms. Finally, shells, particularly spondylus from Ecuador, served as popular materials for jewelry and inlay, a tradition that the Chamu continued after their conquest of the Lambayaque Valley.